In the secluded and icy environment of the Arctic Circle, there existed a close-knit community known as Taiga Village, where the harsh conditions seemed to only strengthen the unity and resolve of its residents. In this community lived a family of three, a robust man who operated a local hunting business, his wife who balanced homeschooling their 12-year-old son with occasional jobs to help support the family, and their adventurous and inquisitive son. This boy, full of energy and dreams, had long cherished the desire to own a dog. He tirelessly begged his parents for one, assuring them that he would take up all the necessary duties such as walking, feeding, and caring for the dog. Despite his earnest promises, his parents were hesitant, fearing the added responsibility might fall on their shoulders. Their routine life took an exciting turn when the boy's uncle, who resided just an hour away, made an unexpected visit. These visits were always a highlight for the family, bringing laughter and warmth to their home. On this particular day, as they welcomed their relative, the boy noticed his uncle approaching with a peculiar, somewhat bulky box, from which soft sounds of yapping and squeaking could be heard. His heart pounded with anticipation as he approached. When he took the box from his uncle, his hands shook with excitement. As he opened the lid, tears of joy welled up in his eyes when a small, gray puppy, eager and full of life, tried to climb out of the confines of the box. The boy tenderly lifted the puppy into his arms, and the little dog, thrilled by the attention, wagged its tail so enthusiastically it seemed it might fly off. The boy's uncle, aware of his nephew's long-standing wish, had decided to gift him the puppy, knowing well the happiness it would bring. Initially, the boy's parents were apprehensive about the surprise. However, witnessing the immediate connection and joy between their son and the new puppy melted their concerns away. Consequently, in the midst of the Arctic wilderness, a young boy's dream came to fruition, infusing new energy and joy into the resilient family's life. The parents agreed to let their son keep the puppy under the condition that he fulfill his promises to care responsibly for the animal. Elated. The boy agreed without hesitation. Thrilled that his parents had relented. He committed himself to being an exemplary pet owner. Diligently caring for his new companion by ensuring it was well fed. Regularly walked. And lovingly attended to, the young boy had fully embraced the duties of a pet owner. Engaging in playful activities with his dog. Feeding it. And ensuring its environment was kept clean. One sunny afternoon, as they frolicked in the yard, a chilling howl pierced the air from the dense woods nearby. This was no ordinary sound, it clearly belonged to a wolf. Distinct from the calls of dogs, birds, or other wildlife. In a swift response, the boy scooped up his pet and dashed home to inform his father of the eerie sound. Concerned about the potential danger lurking close to their village. His father, prioritizing the community's safety, recognized the risk of wolves near human habitation and resolved to address the situation personally. Much to the boy's astonishment, the wolf had trailed him to his doorstep. Contrary to expectations, the wolf exhibited no signs of aggression but instead sat calmly on the porch, panting with a seemingly content demeanor. As his father reached for his gun, ready to protect his family. The boy implored him to reconsider, arguing that the wolf had shown no intent to harm and should not be punished for its natural behavior. Remarkably, the wolf appeared docile and timid. And over time, it became an unofficial second pet to the boy. Despite its daunting size and wild nature, the wolf was gentle and soon even his parents grew fond of the animal. A festive occasion arose when the family was invited to a nearby birthday celebration. They decided to walk to the venue, with the wolf tagging along peacefully. Although their unusual companion drew nervous looks from other pedestrians, the family was undisturbed. 
However, upon arrival, the wolf's presence caused alarm among the guests. Despite the boy's assurances, his mother decided it was prudent to keep the wolf confined in the barn for everyone's safety. During the celebration, the boy spent much of his time outside the barn, conversing with the wolf through a small opening, hoping to alleviate any feelings of loneliness or distress it might have. As the party drew to a close, it became apparent that the boy was nowhere to be found. Initially, his mother thought he was still by the barn, but a thorough search proved otherwise. Meanwhile, the sounds of the wolf whimpering and scratching inside the barn were dismissed as the family's concern for the boy intensified. The situation grew tense as it became evident that the boy had disappeared, the boy was nowhere to be found in the village. And the only conceivable place he could have wandered off to was the dense and foreboding forest. Renowned for its darkness and myriad dangers, the forest was no place for anyone, especially a child, to explore alone. This realization set off a wave of panic and triggered a desperate search as the boy's well-being became everyone's primary concern. A child, innocent and curious, had inadvertently found himself in peril. A situation that filled the hearts of all present with fear. The boy's distraught parents, together with the guests at the gathering, were gripped by fear upon discovering his absence. They quickly formed a search party and began combing the nearby woods. However, as darkness fell and the forest grew impenetrable, coupled with the potential threat from the wildlife residing within, the search efforts were deemed too dangerous to persist. With heavy hearts, the party decided it was wisest to pause the search until daybreak, and everyone returned home, laden with concern for the young boy. As the night wore on, Filled with anxious anticipation for dawn, the boy's mother was struck by a sudden memory, the presence of a wolf that had been secured in a friend's barn. Guided by maternal instinct, she hurried to the barn, released the gate, and watched as the wolf dashed into the forest with determined vigor. She followed, struggling to keep pace with the swift animal, clinging to the hope that it might lead her to her son. As she pursued, she spotted fragments of her son's clothing snagged on tree branches, a poignant indication that he had indeed traveled this path. The wolf, with its keen sense of smell, tracked the scent fervently. Abruptly, it surged deeper into the forest, too swiftly for the boy's mother to keep up. Overwhelmed by despair and exhaustion, she was forced to return home, resolved to continue the search with the dawn. When morning broke, the search party gathered anew and ventured back into the forest. They spent the day meticulously sifting through the undergrowth and shouting the boy's name. But neither he nor the wolf were anywhere to be found. Returning home at dusk, their spirits were low, their eyes tear-filled. To their utter amazement, they arrived to find the boy lying unconscious on the porch of their house. The wolf sat beside him calm and watchful. The most harrowing sight was the boy's leg. Caught in a trap, similar to those his father set for wild animals, resulting in severe bleeding. His unexpected return, under such dramatic circumstances, left everyone both relieved and shaken, the boy looked severely injured. His appearance suggesting a painful ordeal. It was unmistakable that the wolf had been instrumental in the boy's safe return. This was evidenced by the distinct teeth marks on the back of the boy's frayed clothing, which indicated that the wolf had carried him with care. Upon witnessing their son's return in such a state, the parents immediately rushed him to the hospital. There, he received medical attention for the injuries sustained to his leg. By the next morning, the boy had regained consciousness and was able to share the details of his frightening experience. He disclosed that he had ventured off, feeling hurt and betrayed by his parents' decision to lock away the wolf, a creature he had come to view as a misunderstood ally. His harrowing tale, coupled with the wolf's unexpected show of loyalty, 
not only ensured a safe return but also prompted a profound reflection among all who heard it about the deep bond that had developed between the boy and the wild animal. This incident profoundly altered the family's perspective on the creatures of the forest, helping them recognize that even those deemed dangerous are capable of displaying loyalty and kindness. In a quaint rural village nestled among dense woods, there lived a curious young boy fascinated by the wildlife that roamed near his family's barn. One day, upon discovering that a wolf had sought refuge there, he was not scared but rather filled with a sense of wonder and a desire to assist the animal. To achieve this, he ventured into the forest in search of a sturdy branch to pry open the barn door. However, his adventure took a distressful turn when he soon found himself hopelessly lost among the towering trees. Despite his attempts to call for help, his cries were swallowed by the vast wilderness. As he wandered in an attempt to find his way back, the boy accidentally stepped on a hidden trap which snapped shut on his leg, causing excruciating pain and overwhelming him to the point of losing consciousness. During these fleeting moments of awareness, he realized the wolf he had intended to help was now his rescuer. The wolf delicately gripped his clothing and navigated through the underbrush pulling him toward the safety of his home. By the time they reached the house, the boy's parents had been fraught with worry, observing the scene of the wolf bringing their injured son back. Their initial doubts about the wild animal transformed into deep gratitude. They realized how misjudged the wolf had been. And from that day forward, they embraced him as a part of their family. Forever grateful for the creature's pivotal role in their son's return, this narrative sheds light on the astonishing relationships that can develop between humans and creatures from the wild. It confronts our pre-existing beliefs about the inherent qualities of wild animals and vividly demonstrates the deep bonds that can be formed through acts of kindness and mutual understanding. What are your impressions of this poignant yet uplifting tale? How would you respond if a wolf unexpectedly chose to integrate into your family circle? You can share it with everyone in the comment area. And then we will bring you in another touching story. Let's continue. The figure, clad in a weather-worn jacket, was a local woodsman who had wandered deep into this part of the Wisconsin wilderness, often walking these paths to check on the well-being of the forest and its inhabitants. His presence that day was not by mere coincidence but was part of his routine patrol. As the wolf lay caught in the merciless grip of the steel trap, each minute intensified its predicament. The once majestic creature, a symbol of the wild's untamed essence, was now a victim of human encroachment, a stark reminder of the delicate balance between man and nature. This wolf, known in the local lore as a ghostly figure that seldom made its presence known, had been master of its domain seamlessly vanishing after each hunt, leaving no trace but the legends shared among the nearby village folk. Deep in the heart of the Wisconsin woods, this lone wolf had thrived, navigating the vast landscape with a silent grace, driven by the primal urge to survive. It had set its sights on a plump squirrel, an opportunistically easy target amidst the harsh wilderness, with a mixture of stealth and precision. The wolf had inched closer. Its piercing gaze locked on the unsuspecting squirrel engaged in a frantic search for nuts. Completely unaware of the imminent danger, the ensuing chase was a breathtaking spectacle of nature's raw, unforgiving dance, predator and prey. Each in their element. The wolf, with adrenaline coursing through its veins, had pounced towards the squirrel. In response, the squirrel, with a sudden awareness of the looming threat, darted with incredible agility, weaving through the dense underbrush. The wolf, embodying both relentlessness and elegance, had pursued with ease, its instincts sharpened by the thrill of the chase. However, as they ventured deeper into the forest, the terrain grew increasingly perilous. Beneath a deceptive carpet of fallen leaves lay the remnants of human interference, traps set by hunters. Silent yet deadly. Engrossed in the pursuit, the wolf had neglected the subtle signs of danger. 
with a triumphant capture of the squirrel. It felt the rush of a successful hunt. Yet as it prepared to retreat into the safety of the shadows to enjoy its meal, its fate took a cruel turn. Caught in a hunter's trap, the hunter became the hunted. Ensnared in an ironic twist of fate, as the reality of its grim situation set in, the wolf had no choice but to release its prize. The squirrel, seizing the opportunity, scampered off into the thicket, leaving the predator to face the grim consequences of its entrapment. As human footsteps neared, a sound that often spelled doom for the creatures of the wild, the wolf's desperation mounted. But just as hope seemed to wane, the woodsman appeared. His approach, though cautious, was marked by an understanding of the wild and a respect for its creatures. What unfolded next was a careful, tense rescue as he worked to liberate the wolf from its bindings, a poignant reminder of the intricate connections and moral responsibilities we hold within the web of life. To its grim reality, the wolf's once fierce eyes dimmed with a quiet despair. But just as all seemed lost, an unexpected turn of events unfolded. From the depths of the forest emerged a group of conservationists, who had been tracking the increasing use of traps in the area. Alerted by the gunshot, they hastened towards the sound, hoping to prevent any harm. As they approached, their presence startled the hunters, who were unprepared for human interference. The conservationists quickly assessed the situation and understood the urgency of rescuing the trapped wolf. They communicated calmly and authoritatively, convincing the hunters to stand down, arguing the importance of preserving wildlife and pointing out the illegality of their trapping methods. The hunters, faced with the unexpected confrontation and the reasoned arguments of the conservationists, reluctantly agreed to retreat. With the hunters gone, the focus turned entirely to the suffering animal. The conservationists, equipped with the necessary tools and expertise, carefully approached the wolf. They spoke softly, a tactic used to calm the distressed creature. As they worked to release the trap's merciless grip, each movement was gentle yet swift, a delicate balance to ensure the wolf's safety and their own. Once freed, the wolf lay still for a brief moment, perhaps in disbelief of its regained freedom. The conservationists stood back, giving it space to realize that the danger had passed. Slowly, the wolf regained its bearings and strength, its eyes reflecting a cautious gratitude, with a tentative first step, and then another. It gradually moved towards the safety of the dense forest. The conservationists watched as the wolf disappeared into the undergrowth, a symbol of resilience and survival. This incident not only saved a life but also highlighted the critical intersections of human impact and wildlife conservation. It reminded everyone involved of the fragile balance in the ecosystem and the vital role humans play in either disrupting or supporting it. The wolf's ordeal became a poignant testament to the power of empathy and intervention sparking a renewed commitment among the conservationists to fight against the use of cruel traps and to advocate for coexistence with the wild creatures of the forest that watchful eye on the surroundings. Aware that the forest might still hold other hidden threats. As he stood guard, the rest of the hunting party hurried back to their vehicles. Their steps quickened by the urgency of the situation. Their leader, guiding them with a sense of purpose reminded everyone that their actions could indeed make a difference in the delicate balance of nature they so often disrupted unintentionally. Upon reaching the trucks, they rummaged through their equipment, eventually finding a set of bolt cutters that would serve to free the wolf from its painful bindings. The task ahead was clear, and with renewed energy, they made their way back to where their companion and the wolf waited. The forest seemed to watch in silent anticipation as the men approached. The leaves whispering tales of past encounters between man and beast. The hunter who had stayed behind greeted them with a nod. His expression one of relief as he saw the tools that would liberate the wolf. Carefully. With a respect born of the elder hunter's wise leadership. They approached the animal. The wolf. 
sensing the change in the air. Remain still. Its eyes reflecting a complex mix of fear and understanding. With steady hands. They cut through the trap's chains. Each snap of the metal echoing through the woods like a promise of redemption. As the last restraint fell away. The wolf cautiously stretched its limbs. Each movement tentative and measured. The hunting party stood back. Giving it space. Their breaths held in a collective pause. Finally. The wolf stepped free. Its gaze lingering on the humans who had shifted from hunters to saviors. With a subtle nod. As if acknowledging their unexpected mercy. The wolf turned and vanished into the thicket. Its form blending seamlessly with the shadows of the trees. The group watched in silence. The weight of the moment settling in their hearts. The youngest hunter. Who had initially viewed the wolf with malice. Now seemed contemplative. His earlier aggression softened by the outcome of their actions. Their leader. Satisfied with the turn of events. Took it as an opportunity to remind his team about the principles of hunting with respect and responsibility. As they headed back to their lives beyond the forest. The lesson of that day remained with them. A poignant reminder that even in the pursuit of their own interests. There was always room for compassion and coexistence with the wild. This encounter. Initially an error had transformed into a powerful testament to the potential for humanity's kindness in the wild. Untamed world of nature, the hunter maintained a watchful vigilance. Acutely aware that the forest was a repository of hidden mysteries and sudden surprises. This environment demanded constant alertness. In the meantime, his companions ventured deeper into the forest. Their footsteps mingled seamlessly with the soft rustling of leaves as they scoured the area for anything that might aid in the liberation of the trapped animal. Nearing the forest's periphery, they stumbled upon a piece of plywood concealed within the thick underbrush. One hunter inspected it thoroughly, assessing its strength and potential utility in fashioning a barrier that would safely separate them from the wolf once freed. Convinced of its adequacy, they carried the plywood back to the site where the wolf was ensnared. Approaching the animal with caution, the hunter held the plywood, while the wolf regarded him with a blend of caution and curiosity. The atmosphere grew tense when another hunter appeared with a wrench, causing the wolf to let out a soft whimper, possibly anticipating the looming danger of these final moments. However, the demeanor of the hunters was non-threatening. Even the youngest among them, a boy who had previously seen the wolf merely as a plaything, now approached with a mature seriousness, holding the plywood ready for action. As the first hunter slowly advanced towards the wolf, the animal's instincts kicked in, its ears flattened, and it snarled defensively, a natural reaction honed by years of surviving in the wild. The hunter halted respecting the clear boundary now set by the wolf's posture. The plywood he wielded acted as an improvised shield, standing firm against the wolf's defensive stance, speaking in gentle, soothing tones that melded with the whispers of the forest. The hunter began to alleviate the thick air of tension. The wolf, initially distrustful, started to perceive the subtle signs of compassion in the hunter's approach. Gradually, the atmosphere softened, replaced by a tentative curiosity in the animal's gaze. With each cautious step, the hunter drew closer, the plywood serving as a prudent intermediary. The wolf's demeanor shifted from defensive to inquisitive, allowing the man to approach without its previous aggression. Sensing this change, the hunter continued using the plywood as a shield while his companion handed over the wrench. He then proceeded to carefully inspect the trap, preparing to free the wolf, the same one. He believed, had appeared. Instead of threatening him, it led him through the treacherous landscape to safety. This act of unexpected kindness from a wild creature had left a deep imprint on his soul, compelling him to one day return the favor. Thus, when the opportunity arose, the elder saw it not just as a chance to set right by the wolf, 
but as a fulfillment of a personal debt. A moral obligation that transcended their usual hunter-prey relationship. The forest, with its thick canopy and rustling leaves, seemed to acknowledge this shift in dynamics. Its usual whispers quieter as if in respect for the unfolding drama. The elder recounted his story with a reflective tone. His voice blending with the natural sounds of the forest. Adding a layer of solemnity and gratitude to the atmosphere. The other hunters listened intently. Their earlier intent of capture transformed into one of reverence and understanding. They no longer saw the wolf as mere prey. But as a fellow creature with its own life and rights. This profound experience reshaped their approach to hunting, instilling in them a newfound respect for the lives they interacted with in the wild. The wolf, now a distant shadow amongst the trees, symbolized not only freedom but also the bridge between human and nature, teaching them the virtue of compassion and the interconnectedness of all living beings. As they packed up their gear, leaving behind the area where the wolf had been trapped, their steps were lighter. Their hearts fuller. They carried with them a story that would echo through their community. Perhaps altering the local hunting culture forever. The piece of plywood. Marked by the ordeal. Remained not just as a relic of the past but as a testament to a pivotal moment of change. A silent witness to the power of empathy and understanding, unaware of the significant consequences of its movements. The wolf inadvertently left a series of hoof prints in the fresh snow. These prints, cutting through the thick blanket of white, served as a crucial guide for a man lost within the convoluted paths of the dense forest. They led him through the perplexing labyrinth of trees, ultimately bringing him close enough to the forest's edge that he was able to locate his truck and navigate his way back to safety. Though the wolf was never aware of the pivotal role it played in the man's survival, the elder who had been lost never forgot the assistance he had received in his time of dire need. This profound sense of gratitude was the reason he was adamant about releasing the wolf when it was caught in a trap years later. Despite not being sure if this was the exact same wolf that had once guided him, he felt that saving a member of its species was a way to honor and repay his debt. As the hunters listened to the elder's recount of the events, they developed a deeper appreciation for his profound connection with the wolf and the underlying reasons for his decision to let it go. They departed with newfound insights into life, the nature of debts, and the enigmatic bonds that are often formed in the wilderness. What a remarkable tale! Who would have thought that a hunting party would end up saving a wolf? We'd love to hear your thoughts and reactions in the comments below. Stay tuned for more extraordinary stories like this one. See you next time.